Hi guys and welcome back to Ryan Study Corner where the aim is to make learning as fun, easy and accessible as possible. Today we're going to be learning about derived units. So let's get into it. So derived units. What are our learning objectives here? At the end of this video, hopefully we'll be able to recall that derived quantities and their related units are produced by multiplying and dividing fundamental quantities and their units. And learning objective number two is that we should be able to recall the special names given to the units for some of the derived quantities. So what exactly is a derived quantity? If we look here, we see that a derived quantity can be formed two ways. One is by multiplying or dividing a combination of fundamental quantities, which we should remember from a few videos ago. Or it could be from dividing or multiplying a combination of fundamental quantities and derived quantities. So basically, you can use fundamental quantities, put them together by division or multiplication to do it. Or you can use some fundamental and derived, and that will give you a derived quantity as well. So, how is our derived unit form? Now a derived unit is formed exactly the same way, because the same way you'd get that derived quantity, you do exactly the same thing, and the unit that you get from that is your derived unit. Now this may seem strange right now, but when we try one, I think you'll understand what I mean. So how do we get derived units? Now derived units are obtained from the same equations that are used to obtain a derived quantity. So speed. Speed is equal to distance over time. Distance is a fundamental quantity because remember that's length and time is a fundamental quantity. So speed is now a derived quantity because it was found by dividing two fundamental quantities. Now what is the unit for speed? And the unit of speed is equal to the unit of distance over the unit of time. What is the unit of distance? That's meters. And the unit of time is seconds. So that's why we have meters per second. So we know speed is meters per second, or that's how we usually do it. That's the unit we usually use when we're doing calculations. So that's where we get that from. Now let's try another example. Let us try density. Now density is equal to mass over volume. Now mass here is a fundamental, I hope you all can see that properly, a fundamental quantity and volume is a derived quantity. Volume is a derived quantity because Volume is length by breadth by height, which is side by side by side, which are technically three different values for length. So if you think about the way that derived units are formed, one of the things is from multiplying fundamental quantities. So technically you're multiplying a fundamental quantity to find volume. And then density is a derived quantity. Now, how do we find its unit? The unit of density would be equal to the unit of mass over the unit of volume. So, the unit of mass, if we think back, is kilograms. Let me cross my T. And the unit for volume is meters cubed so therefore the unit for density is kilograms per meters cubed make sense now let's try something that's one little tiny tiny bit um i don't want to say difficult but let's just see relative density now what is relative density? 
relative density is the density of a substance over this is supposed to be the density of uh, um, we usually use water but essentially you can compare to anything we just usually use the standard as water so let's go with that so let me write it out since I made that big error in the PowerPoint so relative density is equal to the density of a substance over the density of the water. So what then would be the unit of relative density? The unit of relative, let me just shorten here, density is equal to the unit of density of the substance over the unit of density of water. Now we just calculated the unit for density and we found that it was kilogram per meters cubed. So for the substance it would be kilogram per meters cubed. Let's put um, a little s here for substance and then for water it's still density so the unit would still be kilogram per meters cubed and let's just put a little w here for water so kilogram per meters cubed for the substance and kilogram per meters cubed for the water how do we simplify this well, one, we can see that we're dividing fractions. When we're dividing fractions, what do we do? Change the division to multiplication and we flip the second fraction. So we have kilogram, and my writing is in colored. We have kilogram per meter cube. This is for the substance multiplied by remember we're flipping the second one so then it will become meters cubed over kilogram and this is for water are we seeing anything that we can cancel here yes we definitely see that we can cancel kilogram here and kilogram here and we can also cancel meters cube here and meters cube here so then we end up with no unit how is that even possible? Now, some things don't have a unit. Relative density is one of them. Well, let me do say things. Some quantities have no unit. So therefore, as you can see at the bottom of the slide here, it is called a dimensionless quantity. Some quantities are, you learn more about them as we go along, and you realize when you're working out the questions, which are dimensionless and not, but I'll still keep pointing them out. So I think you should have a good understanding of that so far. Here are some quantities that you should try doing the same thing we just did to come up with the unit for each of them. So that's it for today. I hope you all understood what derived quantities are and how we get their units. And as usual, be safe. And be kind to yourselves. I'll see you all next video.